Chicago. The city was its own victim, sado pollution and pothole masochism for miles to the door of the girl whose number came out a wrinkle in the typewriter sheet with Lance's roughly drawn map he kept stuffed in his pocket while the carbs pumped exhaust through hot, hot pipes beneath him. Up steps she stood, fresh smile reminding him of a forgotten small highway snake town's waffle house waitress, fresh like the blue grass at dawn in the heart of America, wide wine glass full to the lip with Zinfandel in her not so steady hand. In his heart, he still cherished the memory, damn him, sitting beside her on her soft couch after the hard leather of his bike, having a beer and a Valium, watching her ass move to Mazzy Star from the radio by the brick interior wall, bacon and eggs fried on the stove while hard shower water cleansed him of eight states of road. He gave her the book, asked the dust, and she read the letter inside from Lance, telling her to take good care of Will. First sight, she thought she wanted him, wanted his sweat dried into cotton, said she would, but didn't wash his clothes for days. He wore the Harley t-shirt she gave him back to his apartment, skull and bones on faded black. The memory of that 25th hour was so clean, so sharp, so fresh. Now the messages she never left made him run fingernails down the lines in his corduroys. He wanted her, wanted to be lying with her in her apartment and mindlessly watch the flashing television images splash the wine glasses and walls with light cool blue like her steady and expressionless eyes despite the rest of her. The night with her was all spirits and no spirit, and that was the biggest lie he ever told himself, cowardly drunk. That damn girl had him by the balls. He rode into the city and back out on the train, through the slow accelerations and high speeds and tapering off gasp of brakes at stops the conductor called out tried to throw off Bella's cruel wor words. He hit the alley by his apartment and gathered wood, broken frames that once held portraits and oil on canvas, for an evening fire that soon blackened and burned the edges of the metal barrel on his back porch. It rekindled his spirit on this cool summer, fall night, brought back other memories, good ones, of haunted hayrides past pumpkin patches, on wagons loaded with fresh and love couples, loaded on rum cider, and smelling of straw in the Midwest expanse outside Chicago, of elders in large wooden armchairs in a circle around large pits of fire he and other children scrambled to feed that exhaled one tremendous gray breath of wood smoke into the pines, standing high above the flickering light. If the milled and stained dry pine he now broke over his knee and placed over crumpled newsprint in the metal barrel had to burn into a pineless orange city sky, his spirit suffered not. Wood was reduced to cinders. Nails blackened and fell to a metal hearth. A weak breeze rattled the leaves of the lone maple in the alleyway before Will, and a sense of solitude, not loneliness overcame him the moment his neighbor's kitchen window went dark until sleep took him away in the cradle of a beach chair. He woke at first light to the cold black barrel of soot and an aching back and stretched to renaissance on his toes in the crisp air, unbuttoned his pants and watered the maple, opened his eyes, brushed his hair back from his face. There was dew everywhere, the world sparkled with it, and suddenly he envisioned the glossy initial layer of wax on Bella's skin, 